Alleluia. Christ is risen. I have a few announcements for us before we begin our worship service. First of all, there's no Sunday school today, so kids will be with us through the worship service. Uh, confirmation will start again not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, um, and so look forward to that. And uh, finally, wanted to thank all of our volunteers that baked things or cooked things or bought things for our breakfast and helped us serve, so let's give them a round of applause. At this time, I invite you to stand as you are able, and we will join in singing Jesus Christ is Risen Today. It's number 365 in your Cranberry Hymnals. I invite you to turn and face the baptismal font in the back of the sanctuary. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. 
Immersed in the promise of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant waters. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you to turn and face forward again and open your hymnals to number 385 and we'll sing together, Good Christian Friends, Rejoice and Sing. We'll sing verses 1 and 2. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. <clears throat> and if there are any children out there this morning that want to come up for children's time and help to collect some coins for our noisy offering on the way up, that would be great. We've got some cups here. So everyone can take a cup and go get some coins and come back up. Remember to go all the way to the back. There's some coins all the way back there. And we got to go all the way to the back and get those coins. There you go. Grab a cup. You need a cup? Hey, Patty. Do we still have the cups? Oh, they're in the back. Never mind. All right. There you go. You can go and see if people have some coins. Awesome. Yeah, come on up. Good job. You're too trying to be rich. No, it's not for me. It's just for God. Yeah, and for hungry people. See, it's for world hunger. Oh, awesome. We need some coins. And you can put your cups right in here. 
Yep, good job. And then go ahead and have a seat on the stair. Here you go, Hattie. Good work. Good work, everybody. And a few more. Go ahead and pour it in right over that. That'll help it go down, will it? Maybe. Oh no, we've got a clog. I don't think I've ever had this problem before where there's a jam with a dollar bill. Huh. Of course, it's on Easter, too, you know? All right, there we go. We're starting to get it in. All right, just pour it in the funnel. We'll keep, we're going to keep it in the funnel. There you go. All right. All right. Yeah, come and have a seat on the stairs. Thanks, everybody. So today is a special day. Does anyone know what today is? Good work. It is Easter today. Now, Easter in the church is when we celebrate Jesus coming back from the dead and the tomb where he was buried being empty. And so some people, some friends of Jesus, there were some women that went and they bought some spices so they could go and make the tomb smell good so people could go and visit Jesus' body. But when they went there, Jesus wasn't there. His body was gone, and there was an angel there dressed in all white and told them, Jesus isn't dead anymore. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming to see you. So I want you to follow me behind the altar here. Can you all come back? All right, we got a big crowd. Yep, come on back. All right. So this is, this is all of our stuff for communion back here. And uh, we have our cups for wine and we have our bread under here. Now you notice it's covered in this cloth. And that's to remind us that Jesus was wrapped up in cloth when he died and he was buried in the tomb. Then we take this off and I, every time I fold it up, do you know why I do that? Because in Jewish culture, folding up your napkin at the end of a meal tells people that you're coming back for your food. So you have to get up at the table and leave and you still have food on your plate. You fold your napkin to say, I'm coming back, nobody touch my food. <laughs> and in Jesus' tomb, all of the cloths that he was wrapped in were folded up and laid down where he was. And that's saying, I'm coming back. I'm alive again. And then one day Jesus is going to come back again and is going to love all of us and save all of us and bring us to God. So we can go back to the front step there. Let's go ahead and have a seat. That went about as good as I thought it could go. So that's great. Yeah, let's have a seat. And I want you to remember at Easter time, when you have a meal today, if you leave and you're coming back for your food, fold your napkin really nice so that nobody touches your food and throws it away, right? Uh, and remember that Jesus is coming back for you. Now, on Easter, one of the things that I say is I say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. And then the whole congregation says, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, at the end of our prayer, I'm going to have you say the first part, and then the congregation's going to respond. So let's pray first. Almighty God, thank you for sending Jesus to be with us. And thank you that on Easter, the tomb was empty. Thank you for that promise that you are coming back again. God, send your Holy Spirit to bless each one of these kids this Easter and, and any of the things that they're doing. If they're celebrating with Easter egg hunts or having a meal or spending time with their families, bless them. We pray all these things in Jesus' name and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Okay, so stand up. We're going to look at the congregation and we are going to say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Alleluia, Christ is risen. All right, you can go ahead and have a seat with whoever brought you to church today. I'll invite our lector forward for the reading of God's. Now, as adults, you're tasked with remembering the real message of that, okay? Good morning. The first reading comes from Acts chapter 10. 
Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm is read responsively today, and it will be Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Rejoicing and salvation in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which, you also, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. Go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise I invite you to be seated. I just, I gotta say again, I said this at the first service, but that is the jazziest gospel acclamation I have ever sung, and I really appreciate it. I just like, hallelujah, sorry, it's just, it gets me, it gets me. Well, good morning and happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen, hallelujah. Easter is a special day. Easter is the day that we are assured of God's power. A God who conquers sin and death, a God who saves all of us, who gives us hope that we will live in eternity with God and that we'll be reunited with all the loved ones that we have lost. It is a beautiful promise, and it's one that we as humans need to be reminded of over and over and over again to bring us hope. So today, we get to celebrate that promise. But as author Jan Karen says, Easter is never deserved. Let me break that down a little bit because it might seem harsh at first. But let's look at uh, Jesus' 12 disciples before his crucifixion. First of all, one of his best friends, one of his 12 best friends, Judas, is the one who betrays him, sells him out to the Jewish and Roman authorities, tells him where he's going to be so that he can be arrested. Then the other 11 abandon him in the garden. They deny knowing him in the streets. They lock themselves behind closed doors because they're afraid that they may be arrested and die too. And so in Jesus' hour of need, he's completely abandoned by all of his friends. Then we have a New Testament reading from 1 Corinthians and the author, uh, the Apostle Paul. He's talking about how he used to be a persecutor of the church. And it's true, he was a Pharisee. And he went around all over the known world hunting down Christians arresting them, putting them on trial, and voting against them for them to be executed. Of course, later, he's converted to Christianity by Jesus, but before that, he's trying everything in his power to squash Christianity at its start. And then there's us today. I mean, these are all people 2,000 years ago who knew Jesus, but, but we mess up too. Folks, we have everything at our fingertips in this country. I mean, by world standards, we're not wanting for much. There's this quote out there. I'm not sure who said it, but if someone in a third world country says, I want to live in America because even your poor are fat. I say that as a fat person myself. We have everything at our fingertips. And we fill our schedules. We just jam pack them with stuff. And it's so easy to forget about our relationship with God. It's so easy to forget to talk about God, to prioritize other things before our relationship with God. And I'm not just talking church, right? Because our faith and relationship in God goes far beyond these walls into our everyday lives. We consume without thinking about who it's affecting near us or around the world. And of course, we look inward at ourselves far more than we look outward at our neighbors. Easter, folks, is never deserved. So happy Easter, that's it. But no, no, that'd be terrible. No, it does not end there. Thankfully, it doesn't end there. Because while we do mess up, while we prioritize other things, while we, we are unaware of things, and while we could never achieve our way to eternal life, regardless of all of that, God sees us, 
God sees our worth and who we are, and God loves us anyway, regardless. God sent Jesus to live with us, to die and to be resurrected so that we could have eternal life. Yes, Judas betrayed Jesus, and his 12 disciples abandoned him. Jesus knew all of this was going to happen, and Jesus still washed their feet, still gave them communion, even Judas, washing Judas's feet and giving him communion. Yes, the Apostle Paul did everything in his power to destroy followers of Christ, and yet Jesus still meets him on the road, still meets him with love and forgiveness, and completely transforms his life, offering him new resurrection life. And you too, regardless of what you've done, are loved by Jesus, are special to Jesus. You too are offered communion and the forgiveness of sins. You too are offered a resurrection life. Now, before I was a pastor, I was in youth ministry. I did that for just over a decade. And uh, years back, I was talking with a student who was going through a particularly difficult time in life. I mean, really, really heavy stuff that kids shouldn't have to experience. For whatever reason, she stopped by the church and was telling me about this, and we were talking together, and she said that she couldn't even pray because she was afraid that God would be mad at her because she knows every time that she prayed to God, which was not very often, large gaps between prayer, she'd only ever ask God for something. So she felt like if she did pray, she needed to start with all these apologies and hope that God would even listen to her. While we were talking, we started talking about Luke chapter 15, one of the best chapters in the Bible. It's made up of three different parables. And each of those parables is about someone or something that is lost that God finds again. And when that thing is found, there is great rejoicing. I mean, there's a party that is thrown because God is so happy that that lost thing is found. Now, I can understand her thinking God would be mad at her. I can understand why anyone would think that. You know, you haven't prayed in a long time. You feel guilty about that. You haven't been to church in a long time. You're afraid God's going to be mad. You haven't done X, Y, or Z. And you think, maybe I'll just slink off in the shadows where God's not watching. God will forget about me, and I, I won't have to deal with all of that. After all, when we have a friend that only comes to us when they need something... It's a little irritating, isn't it? But folks, God's ways are not our ways. God always welcomes us with open arms into new resurrection life every time we turn back to God. We are always welcome to that Easter love, that Easter that isn't deserved, but is freely given to us. So next week, we're going to start some readings in the lectionary. The lectionaries are three-year rotations of Bible passages that are assigned to each Sunday. And our New Testament reading for five or six weeks are going to be selections from 1 John. Now, 1 John is called the Book of Love. It's called that because at the very center of this book, it's about how much God loves the world, how much God loves you and me. And I want to invite you all, come back next week, And hear that promise and that hope of a God that loves you regardless. If you come to church and you've only ever experienced judgment, if you've only ever felt guilt, if you've been overwhelmed by doubt, if you just really don't know what to think about this whole church and faith thing, I want to invite you to come back. Let's keep this Easter thing going. You know, this is a good thing. Yeah, thank you, by the way. First service, deadpan. I said, keep Easter going, no smiles. I just say, smile or do something, you know? It was early, though. It was early. Come back next week and hear about God's overwhelming, intense, powerful, and unconditional love for you. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what you've said or what you've done, God loves you. So, that's the promise of Easter for all of us. Whether we deserve it or not, Jesus came, Jesus lived, Jesus died, and Jesus was resurrected for you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We'll see you next week. Amen.
I would invite you at this time to please stand as you are able. We'll sing together, Jesus Shall Reign. It's number 434 in your hymnal. Congregation will sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 5, and our choir will lead us in verse 4.
us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world, God of grace. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope, God of grace. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations. Free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. God of grace. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith, especially Bruce, Lynn, Katie, Joan, Paulina, Kim, Jeff, and for your spirit in our midst. We pray for the people of Baltimore and the families of the six lost workers. We pray now for those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of grace. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to turn and share a sign of God's peace with each other. And as you're wrapping up, I'd invite you to be seated, and I'll invite our ushers forward to receive this morning's tithes and offerings.
You call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the glorious resurrection of Jesus, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done, thy kingdom be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of bread. Come and eat at God's table. All are welcome here. I invite you to be seated. Just a quick word about our communion procedure. In a moment, the ushers will dismiss you by rows to receive the elements of bread and wine. We have gluten-free wafers on the stool in the front. Just let us know if you're gluten-free and you can have one of those. We also have red wine or white grape juice. After you're finished communing, you can put your glasses in the trays on either side and use the outside aisle to return to your seat. And here at Bethlehem, we practice Eucharistic hospitality. And what that means is that all are welcome here at the communion table. 
So if you had any questions or doubts or whether or not you could come and receive the elements of bread and wine, you are welcome, and we hope you join us. I'll invite the ushers forward now.
Now may the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto everlasting life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Now I invite you to receive the blessing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll join in singing our sending hymn, Thine is the Glory, number 376 in your hymnal. Thank you. 
Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God. I'll